The next presentation is lupus anticoagulant of first pregnancy, visit predictive of pregnancy loss. It's presented by Dr. Petri from the uh, University of Job Hopkins, Baltimore, USA. I have no relevant disclosures. These are the important references. We wanted to determine if it was possible to predict at a first trimester pregnancy visit whether the woman with lupus was going to suffer a pregnancy loss. It isn't sufficient to assume that a woman with lupus who has a pregnancy loss will have it based on antiphospholipid syndrome because, of course, pregnancies are also lost due to active lupus and lupus nephritis. In fact, you may be surprised to learn that many studies found no or only a borderline association of antiphospholipid antibodies in pregnancy loss in lupus. In fact, two studies that found an association aren't generalizable to all of lupus. Dr. Maroney's study included lupus nephritis only. And Michael Lockshin reporting for the PROMISE study, I'll discuss here. The PROMISE study excluded a lot of women with active lupus, such as women that needed a lot of prednisone, proteinuria, renal insufficiency, or hypertension. In addition, the PROMISE study report lumps all adverse pregnancy outcomes together so that would include preterm birth, small for gest gestational age, and preeclampsia. So there weren't enough numbers to address pregnancy loss alone. Here are the promised results, though, because they're really quite compelling that the lupus anticoagulant is the predictor of adverse pregnancy outcomes. There was no association with anticardiolipin. The PROMISE study also differed from our usual practice and that there was a very complex panel of tests done to ascertain the presence of the lupus anticoagulant in the laboratory of Carl Laskin. Megan Close and I made this mnemonic to predict pregnancy loss in the Hopkins lupus cohort. It is evidence-based. We found that the four things that predicted pregnancy loss were proteinuria, antiphospholipid syndrome, thrombocytopenia, and hypertension. What I wanted to do today was to go further and to convince you that the A should stand for antiphospholipid syndrome or lupus anticoagulant without a previous history of APS, and that doing the lupus anticoagulant by a single test in our hands, the Russell Viper Venom time may be sufficient. Our pregnancies were mostly between the ages of 20 and 39, as expected in Baltimore Caucasian and African American patients. Very real, no real difference in calendar year. We are going to go into the in more depth in the next slide. But the most important result is right here. It's the current lupus anticoagulant that matters with a very significant p-value, a history of the lupus anticoagulant but not currently present is also associated but much less so, and there's no effect for anticardiolipin. Now let's drill down on the current lupus anticoagulant positive patients. You can see that there were 40% losses in those 15 pregnancies versus only 9% in the others, with 9% not differing from the general female population with a really significant p-value. We looked more carefully to see if there was any difference in how these pregnancies were treated, and we really couldn't find anything. I can't present statistics to you because of the small numbers. We also looked more carefully at the patients who had had a history of the lupus anticoagulant. 27% of them had a thrombotic event prior to pregnancy, but we could not label them as APS because in most cases there was no assay done at the time of the event. We also looked at other risk factors and were able to prove 
that moderate disease activity in the first trimester is predictive, here defined as a physician global assessment of two or greater on a zero to three visual analog scale. So two or greater means moderate to severe disease activity. But as you see, no association with serologies and no association with the prednisone dose either. So to conclude, the lupus anticoagulant defined by just one test in the first trimester is the only antiphospholipid predictor of pregnancy loss in lupus. And this analysis was not dependent on the patient meeting the definition of antiphospholipid syndrome. In addition, moderate disease activity by the physician global assessment was an independent predictor. Serologies had no role. I think there are implications of this in our clinical practice. The first is that it may not be necessary to set up a complicated panel of lupus anticoagulant assays. But I think very importantly, I think we can advocate now for treatment of the lupus anticoagulant in a first pregnancy in a lupus patient, even if they do not meet the definition of antiphospholipid syndrome. I would like to thank our funding agency, which is NIAMS. Thank you very much. This paper is now open for discussion. Please say your name and where you're coming from. Schofield, Schofield uh, Oklahoma City, USA. Michelle, do you know anything about the sex of the, of the lost babies, the conceptus? No, I don't have that information. Thanks. So with your result, you would advise to give anticoagulation in a patient during the pregnancy if she has uh, lupus anticoagulant without antecedent, without previous uh, uh, fetal loss. Yes, I think that low-dose aspirin and prophylactic doses of low molecular weight heparin are safe enough that I believe that we can justify using them in a first pregnancy in a lupus patient with a lupus anticoagulant. Please remember, I didn't include any patients that didn't have lupus in this analysis. I'm not sure if, if I understood. Full anticoagulation. No, we, we don't use full anticoagulation in patients who have not had thrombotic events. Okay. We use prophylactic doses of low molecular weight heparin. Over there. Sarfraz from NIMES. So in your uh, analysis, did you look at the anti-beta-2 antibodies also, or only the anti cardiopan IgG? Because as you know, they are shown to be increased uh, with the increased incidence of thrombotic events with the beta-2. We did not have anti-beta-2 available for all the pregnancies because the cohort started in 1986. But in a different analysis where we did have anti-beta-2 available, uh, Adriana Donowski has shown that it doesn't appear to be highly correlated with pregnancy loss in lupus. Last question here. Uh, hello, Guillermo Ponce still. Uh, um, I know and you show that anticardiolipins were not significantly associated with, with the primary endpoint, but did you look at the association of anticardiolipins plus uh, lupus anticoagulant if there were um, higher risk for the, for the outcome? So I think you're getting to this idea, does triple positivity matter? In a separate analysis that I've not shown you, we have not found triple positivity to be any more sensitive than the lupus anticoagulant okay. alone. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>